This is mass at rest, 100% at rest. Notice at one-third the speed of light, how these lines are becoming condensed. At one-tenth the speed of light, they're even become, becoming condensed more. And then, again, at the speed of light minus two feet per second, it would be a fine, narrow line that you couldn't see. There would be a huge amount of energy moving in the direction of travel. But at, at right angles, there would be almost no energy potential. All the potential would be in the direction of movement. Notice that we have this is E equals HF, which is that for electromagnetic energy. Because mass is composed of electromagnetic energy, this, this value, this equation holds for mass also. And there is a continual steady increase of frequency lines as it meets the condition of E equals HF. I'd like to look at mass being condensed within our planet and how that it is done by the um, act of gravity. The Moho River discontinuity in this green line forms about 22 miles beneath the surface of our planet. The Gutenberg discontinuity is about 1,800 miles from its center. Notice that there is a condensing of mass, a cubic gram is 2.8 grams per cubic centimeter. It goes up to 6 grams per cubic centimeter, 1,800 miles from the center of our planet. The reason I bring this up is, is that the, the value of gravitons attracting mass toward the center of Earth is condensing it. It is changing these frequencies so that they do the same thing as we saw with the mass moving through space the frequency of the mass becomes condensed. That's because mass is composed of frequencies. Seven miles from the center of our planet, that would be this mass in red. This blue area represents a spaceship. This mass within Earth, 0 0.717 miles from its center, would have the exact same frequency as would a spaceship moving at the speed of light minus 25 miles per second, less than that. So this mass, if a person could, could take it from here, they could put it in a speeding spaceship and it would fit with no disruption. The frequencies would match. Conversely, if this were blue, I could put this within 0 0.717 miles from the center of our planet and it would fit there and it would cause no disruption. Let's take a look at our spaceship again. Our spaceship is one inch from this huge rock on Earth. All this about it, of course, is Earth. If our spaceship was moving 100,000 miles a second toward this rock, would it be possible to save a disaster? And the answer is yes. There would be two conditions that might be met. The first would be is if you were to cancel all the frequencies within the spaceship, they would be lines of, of energy moving through the mass. If you could cancel those out instantly, the spaceship would remain exactly where it is and it would never hit the rock as long as those frequencies were canceled out. And the opposite thing is, is if these frequencies within a spaceship were to be changed so they move directly opposite to the direction of the spaceship, that spaceship would be moving away at 100,000 miles a second instantly. As quickly as those lines of force were changed, that's how quickly the spaceship would be moving away. And the last thought of that is, if everything within the spaceship were to have the frequency change at the same time, and there were to be people within it, they would have no sense of change of motion. They wouldn't know that, that anything had happened. Well, is this true or not? There's a way to find out. It involves an experiment in outer space. The reason I would like this done in outer space is that it is a condition where all influences are able to be negated. And what we find here are three sets of spheres. One, two, three. They're set ten feet apart. And the reason for this is so that there's no influence from one set to another. So that 
this heated sphere would have no effect on the cold one, and this heated one would have no effect on it. I'd like to explain this with number one. Number one, if these were spheres of the same mass and they had exactly the same heat, and they were released in outer space to move freely, they would meet at a halfway point. Number two, if this were a heated sphere exactly equal to those of the first set, a heat and mass, and the one beside it was the same mass exactly, but it had no heat energy, and I marked it C for cold. If, the, if this were done, the cold one would begin moving toward the heated one. The heated one would not move. In the third set, in order to give the benefit of the doubt, I use four spheres instead of two. And these are set three inches apart. And the reason for this is, is to demonstrate that if they were absolutely zero Kelvin, these spheres would never move toward each other, even though set that close together. The reason for that is C2 is equal to E divided by M. C2 being that of the force of gravity is equal to energy divided by the mass. If there is no energy, then there is no gravitational field formed. Now, this brings us to an interesting conclusion. It is possible to make a gravity, a gravity engine. This is how it would work. If you were to have two spheres connected by a bar. These are, these are heated spheres. If these were to be located in outer space, what would happen is the energy of this sphere would move toward this one and this toward the opposite one, and nothing would happen. But if one of these heated spheres were replaced with a cold one, the energy of this one would attract this toward the heated one, C2 equals E divided by M, meaning that this is going to cause gravitons moving in this direction to become attracted in this direction, which would move this. A manner of, of explaining why this works might be found if we were to have um, a disruption of this bar, like just take part of it out what would happen, the gravitational energy of this sphere would attract in this direction and eventually it would hit it. Then the kinetic energy would be transferred to this sphere and it would be moving by means of kinetic energy, which thing we understand because it's, it's like pool balls and we understand how that works. But the same thing would happen if this remained connected with this bar and basically this would form a gravitational machine, a gravitational manner of propulsion. The reason why this is interesting is because the force of gravity is a very efficient way of using energy. And there is a way to prove whether it will work or not. And it is found right back with the experiment. If this is true, and C2 equals E divided by M, then a, a spaceship drive would be able to be made out of the force of gravity.